So, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Ryan T. Thornton. We are starting a new On The Rocks uh, thing, series of interviews. We interviewed the man that you're going to see in a second, Victor Pfeiffer, just before the last Olympics. And we've invited him back to be the first in this new series of interviews at home with On The Rocks. So, hello Victor, how are we? Hi, I'm doing great. Really happy to be here with you, sitting in my, so, in my loft. Well, I'm doing, um, because I do everything here. Uh, so if you see me ferreting away, doing some clips and things, it's because I'm cameraman producer. It's a bit like if you imagine Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, if Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch were just one person. Do you know what I mean? I'm okay. pumping the iron. I'm pumping out some sick beats and I'm spitting yep. out some rap. All in one go. Yeah. So bear with me on that. As I was Love saying, it. the last time that we spoke was just before you went off to the Olympic Games. Um, I think we've got a photo coming up of that. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm trying to imitate. So, how did you get to the front of the queue for the flag ceremony? The only ceremony, there was basically the Austrian guy with the Austrian flag and then immediately behind him was you. Is that just, is that what you, your experience you had from the previous two that you did? Elbows. Elbows. A lot of elbows. Yeah, move it a little bit, sister. Victor's yeah. here. I'm coming through. That's what I did. And then I had Severin, the, the pair skater, you know, plowing people out of the way in front too. It was t it was a nice team effort. Some people got injured, and that's why I think I heard the hockey team had a, a rough time in one of the games. So one of the players got injured from my elbow when I tried to, you know, punch him on the side. But, you know, I made it. And I got some, I got some uh, uh, st st streaming time on TV, so it was all worth it. Okay. Yeah, no, I was very impressed to see that. Um, so you, I've, well, I've got a couple of questions here. You used to play the cello, is that correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, I've got two conflicting stories here. One is that you, in some year, you actually played the cello on your free program. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, so, basically what happened is I played a part that I heard somewhere else and I, didn't, I couldn't find it anywhere, so I just played it myself and I recorded it and added it onto the music. Yep, that's correct. And the next year you were hoping to actually compose your entire program, but that never came off. No. Is that correct? Right. Okay, dog. Yeah. Too much work. Right. Okay. So what we've got now, in honour of uh, your Austrianness and the fact that you're a musical um, professional and abilities at music are outstanding and overwhelming, we've put a little piece together for you. Um, a little bit of a quiz, and I hope you like it. Okay. We're on VT, isn't it? Though? So in this section, what I'm going to want for you, I'm going to play you some music. Okay. And I want you to tell me who is skating to this program. Yeah. Um, and they're when? all going to be from the male category. If you can get oh. when as well, that's even bonus. Yeah. There's okay. about four of them. Are you ready for this, Victor? As we play Namancy Program. So this is your first one. That's Javi Fernandez. Javi Fernandez, quite correct, with Black Betty. Yep. So your first one you did quite well at. Next one. Sorry? You didn't give me a chance to say it. But you knew it was... Kurt Browning? Kurt Browning, there you go, 100%. 
Um, I think you'll probably... There were some other people who skated to it also, I think, but... No. No? Never? No, 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 no. The people who... The other people who skated to that were doing a pale imitation of the okay. Kurt Browning routine. Maybe, There's maybe. only been one. Maybe that was, one. I mean, I'm old. I'm older than you. Don't forget that. But okay. for me, personally, there is only one man who's ever skated to that music. Yeah. Okay. And your next one. Yeah, I know that one. Go on, then. No, wait, wait, wait. I remember it. I know this program. A fellow Olympian? Of course, they all are. <laughs> We're thinking this kind of position. Oh, um, LV Spectrum? No. Oh, they may have skated to it. That would be very unfair. Um, this is, of course... Oh, Jason Brown. Jason, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and your final one. Uh, uh, Sorry? Actually, wait, I skated to this too. That was uh, back then, right? Yeah, this is about that. You skated to it back in 2003-2004. Uh, well done. I was hoping you wouldn't get that. You need to... Yeah, you need to ask me stuff between 99 and 2008. Or 2007. Yeah. I, or 98. I know all of them. You are aware of the advancement that happened in the early 2000s with computing, aren't you? It's quite difficult for me to find things out from 1999. Believe it or not, the year that you skated to Backdraft was the year before YouTube was launched. No way. So I can't find a video. YouTube was launched in 2005, so I've got yeah. footage of you from 2005, but I can't get anything from before that date. Does that not make you feel old, though? Your right. career started a little bit, before yeah. YouTube. Yeah. I know. That's actually, I'm proud of that. That's incredible. Yeah, it's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, you were, you were, you, um, that music was analog. That program was an analog program, as opposed to the digital one that revolutionized yeah, it was in one 2005. The microographer had to literally take tape and stop and then record the next piece and then stop and then record the next one. That's how they did it. I had, well, I was brought up by my grandmother and she had, uh, she was going to cut me some music one day, she decided. Um, yeah. I was about 11 years of age um, and I was in bed because I used to train early mornings about 6 o'clock, get up at 5 it was about 10, at 9, 10 o'clock I was in bed and I heard the music that my grandmother wanted to cut blaring out and um, I went down to her and I said why are you playing it so loud she said if I don't play it loud while I'm recording it they won't be able to hear it in the rink <laughs> <laughs> That's like the first time I was asked to cut a piece of music and I took the CD and I cut it and just put them together. <laughs> oh, scroll. Um, no, I didn't do that. I'm kidding. I'm joking. No, I know. Yeah, that would it's, be it's, it's harder in real life because you you're not able to type lol. Right. That way, that song. Um, I like that, I okay. like that quiz with the, the um, programs and the music. I love that, actually. Because I always want that on Trivial Pursuit or one of the games, card games, because they always ask stupid questions about TV series that I've never even considered watching. Ask me about mm -hmm. skating. Yeah, yeah, they should, I think you should have a, like your own person. That's a good idea for a game. Like you're a chosen game. specialized subject. You just get, yeah. if you land on a certain thing, you get questions about something that you definitely know about. Oh, like that's, you should, you should create that game. It makes people feel good. You can have it about skating, you can have it about red wine, you can have it about anything, basically. Mm -hmm. So yep. you're interested in skating, I'm clearly interested in red wine, is that your point? 
Okay, now I'm going to take you back. So we have to talk a bit. I have to get some sort of controversy in here. Okay. You did have a period when you didn't skate. Oh, you didn't compete internationally. Yep. Um, you were at that time critical of your federation, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, although what skater isn't critical of their federation. Um, and it was because you moved to America. Um, and I suppose I want to ask what, uh, what motivated you at that time and whether you think it's important that skaters move. Is it necessary to further your career um, to move away from Europe, let's say? I know it's not always necessary at all. I actually, I'm going to be really honest here. In my skating, um, Elena Romanova, my coach in Austria, she did an amazing job. She was a really great coach. But then, you know, I had some difficulties that I had to overcome myself. I had to learn quad, triple axel. You know, I, w I, was, I had some challenges. And then I'm actually seeing this with some younger skaters now, and I kind of just make that connection with my own skating. But um, anyways, what happened is it got tough. I had to learn how to do more programs. I had to learn how to do those new elements. And then people talk about, oh, maybe in Austria you can't do it. Maybe the rink is not good enough. Maybe you need a different coach, which was all crap, right? Obviously, because in the end, I just had to dig deep and work on it and figure out how to do it. But then it's easier in the moment, right, when you're young and stupid to just take another excuse and say, hey, you know what? No, it's not me. It's not that I'm not working hard enough. Maybe I just need a different environment and do this, and then I'll learn it. So then, basically, at that moment, when an athlete does that, when an athlete says, okay, it's not about me, I don't have to dig deep and work hard anymore, now I just look for other excuses, you're pretty much done. I mean, in my case, I did two more Olympics after that, but that moment is really tough to overcome because you didn't go through the challenge, you didn't really accomplish it, you just kind of found a way around it. Okay, that's just me being really honest about that situation. That being said, living in America and building a life here was something that I really enjoyed doing and that I always wanted to do. Not always, of course, when I was a toddler, you know, I didn't really think about it too much. But in the later years, I thought about that. So, um, go ahead, yeah. See, I suppose to, to summarize that, you would say that... Um, Moving can be treating the symptoms of the problem instead of actually going to the direct cause of it. It can be. Okay. And that's, that's very interesting. interesting. It's always like that, right? But mm -hmm. it definitely can be. And in my case, I would say it was a little bit like that. Then it was also the fact that I was just very fascinated by what I could do in the sport in America. So it was a mix of both. And then obviously if you go and you look for solutions to your skating somewhere else, you're not going to find them immediately. It's not going to be, it's not a miracle because then you realize, wait a minute, it's actually not the environment only. It's not the coach. It's what do you need to do as an athlete to take it to the next level? So I suppose ultimately, if you're looking at it from an, an economics point of view, yeah, where are the biggest markets on earth that are open to a European? You know, obviously Asia's a huge market though. Um, I don't know how, how good your Japanese is. Um, yep. So I suppose if you're, if you're looking long term, at, you know, your knees might go at some point. Uh, maybe you want to be in the biggest market where you can sell the most in the quickest possible time. Um, well, okay, first of all, my Japanese is amazing. I'll, I'll give you a little sample. Um, please. All right. California roll. Uh, chop, chopstick. <laughs> Take out only. <laughs> Um, no, uh, I think I think this is borderline lazy lacism. Sorry, lazy racism. Uh, um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I love Jap <laughs> I'm, uh, I love Japanese people. I'm just joking. I hope everybody knows that. Um, yeah, sure. But yeah, you were talking about markets. Well, what America had to offer to me that was that I was really interested in is that you can kind of create your life the way you want it in this sport. What I mean by that. We had ice rings that have ice all day long, and I was able to go to school, which is important to me, because you can kind of, you know, the schedule is a little bit more flexible with some of the schools, uh, colleges, you know, universities. And then I was able to teach on the side quite a bit, which I always loved. It's always, it's always been a huge passion of mine. 
and I was able to skate and it all worked with my schedule because it's much more flexible. And mm-hmm. that was huge for me because I kind of felt at the time, maybe it's different now, I wouldn't have been able um, to skate and finish um, a bachelor's degree or university degree and teach at the same time just because resources were a little bit more limited. Even when it comes to, you know, certain online programs or being able to skate any time of the, of the day, um, that was something that was very helpful in, in America that really helped me figure out my schedule. So if we look at the Boston uh, World Championships that have just gone past, mm-hmm. could you still compete? No, not even first. <laughs> I mean, there seems to be been a, a quite a quiet um, quantum leap um, in terms of performances in the past, well, possibly two years, would you say? Oh my God, yeah. I'm so glad I'm not competing anymore because even if I had the best skate, I mean, I, I would be so far away from being able to be competitive. And I even somebody showed me a video from my first world championships when I was 17 and I watched it and I was like, it's, it's not that great. And, and the commentators thought it was good. And I, I, I thought about it. if somebody skates like that now, you know, with no triple axle, just doing no quads, nobody would say, oh my God, this is great. It's going to go really well. It's just totally different. Yeah, well, I mean, we have got the pin-up boy um, of the Spanish chap, mm-hmm. but it's been earmarked as the best worlds ever in terms of performances. And yet there is, some would argue, a decline in um, the viewing of figure skating. Um, Certainly the, the age of the average viewer is getting quite old. Um, what do you think is causing that? Why do you think that you've on the one hand, you know, the Usain Bolt, best ever world record, fastest time that yeah, you've seen with the top three, four, five performances um, at Boston, and yet on the other hand, people aren't that interested. The public. I actually, I've heard before that people would, are talking about the judging system and all that stuff. I think it all started a little bit with um, just technology and entertainment evolving a lot. So, you know, nowadays, even theaters probably, you know, declined because, you know, and even movie theaters, because, you know, there was a time when you would go to a movie theater or you, or you would go to a real theater or watch a concert and that was your source of entertainment. And now younger kids have entertainment everywhere they can stream stuff they can play video games they can they get it anywhere and it's and they get there's a lot of stimulation right and things happen all the time and skating i mean if you go to a real competition it's many hours of not something where you get millions of different stimulations like in a computer game and it's maybe not that entertaining but that's i think that's what started it a little bit but it's still pretty obvious that people love to watch skating whenever Somebody asked me what I do, and I kind of mentioned, you know, I'm a skating coach or used to be a skater, something like that. I always hear, at least here in America, oh my God, I love watching skating. It's the best. Whenever it's on TV, I watch it with my family. And it doesn't matter. They're, they're, even younger people, they all love it. They're always very interested. But the problem is, at least here in America, you can't really watch it. I mean, the only way you can watch it is if you have an Ice Network account or, or you really know where to look because... TV providers are just not broadcasting it. So I feel like people would like watching it, but they don't have access to it. So you can't even get into it if you don't see it on TV or internet. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. That sounds a little bit of, uh, it's them that are not helping us. Um, I, th- I think, I, I, do you not think there's a, an element of a closed circle of, of let's close ranks because we've had a bit of a problem here and, Let's all stick together, skaters, and actually, you, know, you need to talk to these guys. Yeah, they're the ones writing the checks. I, I couldn't agree more. It's kind of you're right. Like when I say that, it's 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 an excuse saying they should do more. But that's not. I feel like when you talk about what you want to do, what you want to bring, the entertainment side to skating, love that. I think that's great. That's one of the things you need to do. Um, I mentioned earlier when we were talking that I'm going to say it again that things like advertisement shouldn't be as restricted in skating, in my opinion. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, it's an art, you know, you, I don't want to have like an, a sticker on my shoulder or on my back. But at the same time, for 
broadcasting companies, they only want to broadcast it if they can have some sort of financial benefit, right? It's not all only about money, but in this business, I guess it might be. So I feel like skating has to be more attractive to the bigger audience, both artistically in the entertainment sector, but also financially that they can have some sort of benefit from it. I mean, I, mean, I think though that just the product placement can be, it can lack class. Yep. You know, the kind of class that you get from champagne made by Verve Clique, True. or um, Rolls Royce, or um, Tag Heer Watchers, which I'm a particular fan of. You know, they're classy things, whereas product placement and just mentioning products for the sake of it, for, you know, hopefully that you get something for free. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, it isn't Verve Clique. Right. The world's greatest champagne. I agree. And <laughs> the thing is that I'm not necessarily saying or suggesting that they need to do that with skating, because it could actually take a turn to the wrong uh, side, but... I'm just I'm just looking for some free champagne here, by the I, way. This isn't like I, a serious point anymore. Yep, yep. <laughs> no, but the thing is, I mean, you watch American football, right? And I, I watched uh, a match once, the Eagles were playing. It was awful. It was mm -hmm. terrible. Um, I went there, and it was literally 10 seconds of play, and then you had a break commercial breaks and then you some cheerleaders you know taking care of the audience so they don't fall asleep and more commercial than then 10 more seconds and commercials i hated it right it was terrible and then after they have four quarters and then after the second quarter i got up and i told my friends all right awesome this was great i loved it. let's go home right <laughs> because i thought it was over half time right and they said no it's just half time i was like what four hours of this crap okay so it was not very entertaining but it was broadcasted everywhere because they just made so much money with it. So I'm not suggesting that that should happen to skating. I'm just saying that maybe one of the reasons why it's so difficult to get the attention from, you know, TV providers is the fact that uh, it's the marketing part is just not as competitive. Maybe. Next thing I've got for you. Um, you are now, correct me if I'm wrong, you are the coach of the national silver medalist at novice level in the United States. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And how, how have you spoken about your experiences as a um, as a skater? Yeah. Uh, do you think you're a better coach than you were a skater? Yeah. Do you, think, do you think that's a fair question to ask? No, it's actually something that I I, I try not to be cocky about it in a way but I feel like I'm way better as a coach than a skater and I always was like the thinking about it part figuring stuff out I, it comes way more natural to me than skating itself so I feel much more comfortable I feel more in the zone as a coach because I don't know my brain works better that way and I'm more creative that way um, and it's kind of like honestly the last three four maybe three yeah three years my last three years that I was competing I prefer... It's good when you're articulate being a coach, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's tough, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I was... I enjoyed coaching more than I enjoyed skating. Not saying that I didn't enjoy skating, but if I had a choice, you know, coaching is what I had even more passion for in the last few years. And that's, you know, tough and, and honest to say, but it's the truth. And... Mm -hmm. So we're going through... Um... So, I mean, you, I know you're set on being a coach, but we are looking, there might be some other options for jobs for you. Mm -hmm. um, because the first time... I was just going to say that. Book, um, this is when you... Um, yes, I, I love that moustache, what happened? But this is when you were um, guest commentator yep. at the Ice Challenge. I think it was 2013, yep. 2014, one of the two. Um, and you were loved by everybody. Um, we didn't ask you back for the next year because I was frightened you might upstage me. Um, but would you consider going into uh, television, into commentating? I don't know if I would be good at it, though. Because when I watch skating, sometimes it's really difficult to turn off the critical side or where you kind of say too much. Maybe it would actually make it interesting, but I don't know. I think that people like Johnny Weir do a much better job at it. 
Um, <laughs> well, I liked, that's why I liked working with you, and I always like work. I did with uh, Jason Brown, he guest commentated last year. Okay. And it was excellent. Yeah. Um, but that's, I like working with them because although I've worked in skating and been a skater for more years than I've not, which makes me feel old, um, I pretend to be an idiot. Mm -hmm. I take off that critical hat. Yeah. Plus as well, um, I don't, when I'm watching a competition, I watch it like the viewers at home should watch it. Yep. Because that's, it, it's enjoyment. Yep. I'm not thinking, is that level three? Ooh, one revolution too short, that's not, not a level three anymore. You have to you know. But then having you there gives me something to bounce off. And I think that there is a role for the straight guy, as it were. Right. Uh, right. There's, a role, there's a role for a straight guy in figure skating. <laughs> Believe it or not, you heard it here first. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I, I, I see what you're saying, but um, in my case, I would be the one pointing out, you know, if somebody has a bad skate, I would be the one saying, well, you know, I watched the practices and they weren't really doing any programs and I don't know if the training is, if they're actually doing all the seminal work they need to be doing to get through a long program. You know, the kind of information that the audience would need to know, I guess, maybe. Yeah. The other thing I like about this photo is that it... Um, it looks a little bit like um, you're a team of physicists right. who've just invented time travel. Yes, and we got you from... Some, yeah. Yeah. What, what, well, another career... When was it? Like from 1910? 20, nine, yeah. Yeah, anywhere, I suppose. Or maybe... The, the, it is. The late Victorian. It's a guy from 1932 mm -hmm. who is kind of stuck in the 1920s. Mm. That's what it is. Yeah, kind of, kind of a 1930s hipster. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And how is the, but seen as he, how is the guy, uh, what's, what's his name again? The guy next to you. Paco. Paco. Is he doing well? Um, I think so. He's gone on to, he's doing things, um, we worked at the Ice Challenge again last year, and he's working in indie music at the moment. Nice. Um, there's somebody, post office records for anybody who's interested. Mm -hmm. Get yourself on, there's some good music coming from them. See, now you're, um, adver now you're advertising. You're yeah. guilty. Yeah, okay. Well, if you are going to watch um, watch the post office records, listen to the post office records stuff, have a glass of Verve Clique, the world's best champagne <laughs> at the same point. Um, but you've invented time travel, so another job, because you can go back to the 80s and become an 80s magician. <laughs> what? 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 I mean, were you skating to the music from David Copperfield? You look like you're about to skate through the Great Wall of China. I know. Explain this look to me, please. I, I, it looks like this. I am looking at my coach, I think it's Priscilla? Yeah. And I'm very serious about showing her my, my foot. And what I'm saying at this moment is, Oh my god, my, my, my toes are so squeezed, it hurts so much. Oh, but, um, I'm going to put some foot powder on later so they don't smell as bad. And then she kind of like scratches her head and she says, Yeah, I like foot powder. That's a conversation. <laughs> Just an awkward conversation with no purpose. Well, um, I know you are busy and you've got to go back and coach. I but we've got another. We got one before you go. Oh, I need to find. I need to actually find my because I'm terribly unprepared. I've not got my phone. Um, I'll get my wife. I think. Okay. Just give me one second because we've got one final segment. We'll we'll lose this in edit. It'll be fine. Right. Be fine. I have a very important question for you. Please. So, right behind you, mm -hmm. you have the world's smallest countertop. Look at that kitchen back there. So basically, you have a full like a, a, a kitchen cabinets and the tiniest countertop in the world. Where are you going to fit the sink on this in the background? This, this is the front room. What is this? This is my living room. This is the on the rocks living room. But it looks like a kitchen with no countertop. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, um, it's kind of cool. You know, doing these interviews, yeah, don't pay the bills very well. Okay, well, you should you should get a mini, like a tiny, two centimeter by two centimeter. 
And then it's for objet da. Look. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's just literally the world's smallest countertop. I love that. Okay, it's like a... And anyway, we'll crack on. Um, so, we have a new segment to the show. I need to get everything together. We're ready. The world's smallest And we go... Victor. That was it? No, this is the segment coming up. Oh, Victor Fyfer, this is your career. That had one picture. So we want to know how well you know your career. Oh no. Yeah? So I've got 60 seconds on the clock. Okay. And your questions. Okay. And we're going to put you on a, we're going to see how many you get, put you on a leaderboard, and then when we get other people having interviews, we want to see if they can you know, better you or not. Okay, wait, that's so the idea. I have a question and I answer right away and then how does it work? Yeah, we just keep going. It's like a one minute on the clock, I'm gonna give you the what questions, if I don't you answer, answer them. Should I say next? Pass, next. Okay. You know? Alright, good. And Victor Pfeiffer, this is your career. At the 2013 European Championships, you had your overall best score. What was it? Uh, 196. 194.77. Um, what was your short program in that same year, 2013? Moonlight Sonata. Correct. How many senior national titles do you hold? Nine. Eight. Always thinking you're better. Yep. Um, Peter Lau, you, t you coach him. What colour skate guys did he have when he competed in Slovenia this year? Uh... Black, red, white, and yellow? I've got blue down here, but I'm going to give you that one. Um, in which season did you skate to Music from the Mask? Yeah. Black, red, white, and yellow? No. Okay, let's crack on. Sorry. Um, in which Please. season did you skate to Music from the Mask? 2011 Worlds. That was like 10 11. Correct. That's one minute gone. That was so fast, you need to make it two minutes. Okay, right, fair enough. But wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to tell you though, the national title one, it actually is nine because you forgot the one from 2003. Okay, Wikipedia's lying to me then. Yeah, because there is one from two years before that, like when I was 15, that you forgot. People... We're gonna have a judge's inquiry on this and we will get back to you. Yep. And you're gonna have one more minute. So, you studied business management at the at university, therefore com please complete the well-known name of economist John Maynard... Next. Keynes. In March 2014, you received a pair of socks from a Japanese fan. What colour were they? Blue. Red with black stripes. What number did you skate at the Sochi Olympics in the short programme? Um, it says Ushi Glass, but it was actually soundtrack from the, the cloud light. No. What number did you skate? Or what position did you skate? What start number did you skate? Uh, fifth. Thirteenth. <laughs> um, when you flew to Sochi, what colour was the towel you received from Austrian Airlines? Red. You tweeted a picture of it. Blue and white. <laughs> when did you send your first ever tweet? Uh, at the Olympics. Uh, January 2014. Just give it to me, I don't have any... I'll give you that, we'll give you that. What does the ISU list as your hobbies? I've started, so I'll finish. What does the ISU list as your hobbies? Playing cello, studying, school. Music. Music, whatever. Obviously not studying, you didn't know who John Maynard Keynes was. <laughs> um, wow, that was pretty bad. Okay. We're going to top those up, and then we'll post when we do the whole thing where you've... Because you're the first one, so you're currently the leader. Right, but I got like, what, two? Three? Uh, that was pretty horrible. I think you're... Yeah, I think you probably got about four. Your guards are black, white, red, and what's the next color? Uh, blue. Blue! Oh my god, I should have known. But I've given you that. Yeah. Because to be honest, the picture that we had, we couldn't quite make out what it was. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you. Uh, Victor Pfeiffer. Victor Pfeiffer, 
This is your career. I should have said, that was your career. <laughs> well, I hope... <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed doing this. Is there anything else you'd want to add before you leave? Because I know you're a very busy man. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this a lot. I don't have anything specific right now. I just want to add that you're doing a good job. I hope you, I hope you have lots of interviews. Yeah, well, you can help with that because I think people possibly respect you slightly more than me. Um, I don't know. Do you think we can... You don't know? But anyway, every little bit helps. Um, do you think people should come and do this? I think they should. I don't think they should come to London and do it because your countertop is too small. <laughs> uh, but I think Skype works fine, though. I'm there is only one thing time. that needs to go on a countertop. Your countertop is going to be famous. The countertop can take a glass of wine. Okay, do that. Please tell me what else does it need? Okay, I think that every guest on your show should add something on your countertop that is realistic for you to attain. So, okay, go. Okay. Go. I, what do I need? I want that mini sink on there. It, ha it can be cardboard, that's fine, but it has to be a small, tiny sink. Yeah, so we've got the kitchen sink. Okay, kitchen sink, that's me. Yeah, cool. We'll, we'll make sure that happens, and then behind there we'll put the leaderboard, and I think you'll come very much in shot <laughs> <laughs> with your four. I only, we do I, have to add those up. I think I only got one right because you gave it to me, and I didn't, <laughs> didn't even... No, but we'll have another look to do. Uh, European Championships. No, you got Moonlight Sonata, correct? Yeah. National Championships, we've got to do a judge's inquiry into. Um, Blade Guys, I'm giving you. So which season did you skate to the mask? We got I that did. correct. Yep, that one I had. Yeah, so that, like, I'm still, I've got to add these up. One, uh, two, three, four... Hey, but how do you know if, like, a Japanese fan gave me socks, right? Like, you looked at it on an Instagram picture, but what if I had blue socks that I did not have on the picture? Because I think I did. I had those, I got these toe socks. Yeah. What year? 14. <laughs> like, 2000. Um, you, send, you send me a picture of those. Okay. And we might be able to do something on it. You know what? I hope I still have it because no, I I have them. They're nice, but they feel weird. I don't like. Do you like those? Like the toe things, toe toe socks? Have you tried them? God no. You have one toe. I have a pair. I have a pair of socks and a pair of sensible brogues. Nothing else just, would offend my feet. Just one. Exactly. That's it. yeah. Um, I think we're about done, Victor. Nice. And it's been absolutely awesome uh, sharing this time with you. It's brilliant now that you're retired and we can share a glass of wine. Or oh, I can have a glass of wine and not feel bad. Have, what time are we on now there? I have a Is cup from, from a Grand Prix from Portland. Fabulous. Filled with water. Because right now it's 11.15. 11.15. I should be back at the rink at 11.40. Okay, well I'm going to let you go without... Before an ado has been in any way furthered, I'm going to let you go. And Ryan T. Thornton from On The Rocks is saying, Victor, ciao, ciao, for now. Bye-bye.